Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is, One woman walks up to me and demands I give up my seat to them. Oh my goodness. Could this be a consequence of the intense heat wave that Netherlands is currently experiencing? Well, it's that or simply your typical toxic concoction of entitlement mixed with a dash of utter ignorance. Background I've been helping my family for a few days. They are elderly and having a lot of trouble managing the intense heat. I spent a few days there helping out with some simple tasks like collecting groceries and, of course, I was there to be with my family. I took public transportation home today, which is much nicer and easier when you're exhausted. Due to the intense heat and my general fatigue, I made the decision to upgrade to first class. Sure, it costs a few euros more, but you get more legroom, less air conditioning noise, because you can easily set up your laptop there. Just hoping. I'm usually too exhausted for anything more than music and phone games. This regional train only travels between two cities, with a few stops along the way. However, nothing major here. No major cities or anything of that like. Because of this, the first class area is actually quite small. It consists of two sections with a table in the middle and two seats on each side, followed by six or eight two-seater benches. I'm not sure how many of them were on each side, to be honest. And it goes without saying that I got into a two-seater that was in the middle and sat next to the window. There is nothing stopping someone from using the island seat because my backpack is on the floor just next to me. Last but not least, I almost always use my Bluetooth earbuds when taking public transportation. Best invention ever. A Karen simply must get her way. This took place today. I'm content with my choice to upgrade, since I'm seated in the first class section that is completely empty and I can see that the rest of the train is starting to fill up. Don't get me wrong, there is great seating on this train wherever you are, but the chairs here are just a tad cozier, which is precisely what I needed at that very moment. Even though I like my family, I must admit that it was a bit tedious. No whining, please. Then. Two women, who I had previously seen on the platform, enter. Something about their overall body language and poise, along with one of the lady's haircuts, gave me an instant Karen vibe. They didn't seem too pleasant to me, I know. They both happened to sit in the other two-seater bench in the other lane behind me. All of this occurs while I'm texting my girlfriend on my phone to see if she would want to come over this weekend so that I could make her a nice supper at home. We've been dating for more than 10 years, and although it's rare for us to spend the weekend apart, at mine or her place, there are moments when I choose to go above and beyond simply because I feel like it's worth it. It's just because I'm positive she finds it enjoyable that I need an excuse. I apologize. Sidetracked. It was hot as all heck. The event. After the train departs, everything seems fine, including the rail, until I unexpectedly notice someone approaching me from the aisle. I take out my train card, turn off my earbuds, because that's just basic decency and common sense, and I get ready to say hello to the conductor when I realize that it's actually one of those two ladies. Me. Anything I can do for you? Strange woman, W. Hi, go somewhere else. We'd prefer to sit there. Me. I'm not moving, but feel free to use this island seat. W. Leave? Immediately. Passenger seats are supposed to be reserved. At this point, I never realized it. Me. And I'm a passenger right now. The system is still operational. I'm exhausted. So please leave me alone now. W. Since we paid for our first class seats, you must relocate. Me. I agree. So please shut up since you're starting to irritate me. I then swiped my earplugs back on. She kept talking, and even though I never had my music turned up that loud, 
I could only catch bits and parts of what she was saying. Eventually, I grew tired of it and yelled, Can't hear you. Got some important music to listen to. Even louder. It's at this point that I also hear the other woman say something like, You just made a mistake. She probably didn't mean that for me, but I'm not sure, and really I couldn't care any less. The next instant, this witch takes hold of my arm and begins tugging on me. Absolutely not. The lady staggers and nearly trips over when I use my other hand to grab my grabbed arm and pull back with both of them. It was an unusual effect. She tries to retain some equilibrium, and now I'm also rising up, shutting off my buds, and lay into her. What the f is your problem, you stupid... W. That is not how you treat me. I'm going to complain to your employer about this. Me. What on earth are you talking about? Like, who's my boss? Get some brain surgery for me, but stop being such a crazy person. If you try this again, I'll genuinely defend myself against your trash. Got that? Edit. Self-moderation is not necessary for this. Yes, I was slow, but I was peed off. But still, I didn't get what this was all about. You can get exhausted from walking four kilometers or more in the intense heat from your family's residence to the train station. However, you shouldn't worry because I carried water with me in case I needed it, and I do identify those needs, which are rare even in this intense heat. You cannot do that to a customer, the woman yells back at me, even making a move to smack me. Oh my god, no. You see, I can't have that kind of thing happen to me, since I wear glasses. They're strong, but I will have a big issue if they break and fall to the ground. I'm sure you can imagine just how tired I get of this. So when I realized what was going on, I used one of the very few strategies my girlfriend was ready to teach me. How to protect yourself from this nonsense. Thus, I did. Her hand was approaching my face, so I grabbed it with both hands and gave it a strong twist. Not caring an F helped, but I was still really angry, and it had an odd result. The other woman abruptly stated, I really don't think he works for this train company. Although I'm not sure if I noticed a smirk there, I immediately shoved Karen away from me. Me. Now leave me the F alone. And then I let go. Reminder to self, treat your significant other really well this weekend. She sighs, mutters, and shoots me glares before returning to her seat. I say, thank you, with a clear hint of sarcasm. F that. It was much easier to listen in with some high-quality, tiny mics in your headphones than to switch back on my music. It turns out that she will complain to the train company about me. How dare I! Some people's nerve, etc. Me. You know, it's more than enough to get you ejected off the train over here if you assault a member of the staff. This is real. Thus, based on your reasoning, I assume you'll be leaving in a short while. Things remained silent, because apparently the thought of having to wait 30 minutes for the next train was too much to handle. Oh, the pleasures of first world problems, Karen. After around 20 minutes, the conductor enters and requests to look over our tickets. He approaches the women after I meet him and give him mine. And sure enough, she says, Your coworker is so rude, he even assaulted me. Which colleague? The conductor asks. I'm the sole employee next to the driver right now. He sits down next to me on the bench in the opposite part a short while later. Around this time, I heard the bleep of WhatsApp, so I grabbed my phone to see who it was from, my girlfriend, who graciously accepted my request and commented on how good I was with words. Are you doing anything special today? I inquire. I've come to accept that I can be petulant when the answer is no. Thus, I make the decision to call her. I never make or take calls when using public transportation. But because it's just the three of us, the conductor, these hags, and me... I'm not breaking any laws, so. Hey, sweetie, 
I apologize for disturbing you, but I had to express my gratitude for teaching me how to do that move. My girlfriend then inquires as to what's going on. How are you? Thanks to you, there's no need to worry. After thinking I worked here, a bee attempted to attack me when I refused to give up my seat. She's even attempted to slap me, but that's totally backfired on that insane bee. After a little period of silence, my girlfriend asks if she's still around. Then, did I use both hands or only one? No, both hands. No, both hands, but don't worry. Even if we tried, none of us could lie our way out of this since they have cameras here. However, I don't really give a dang about such garbage. I just wanted to express my gratitude for teaching me this. I'm aware of how serious you take all of that, along with the fact that I'm an outsider. I sincerely appreciate you, sweetie. Or, at minimum, something almost so. The woman then goes out of the train, giving me an a-hole snipe as she saunters right past me, which surprised me at first because I didn't know we had already stopped at the next location. Wait, this isn't our stop yet, the other woman cried after she hurried up after her, and that was the last time I saw them. When we started moving again, the conductor asked, Mind telling me what happened back there? I tell him the same story about how the woman asked me to give up my seat, but I refused, and then when she tried to hit me, I grabbed her hand and twisted her arm in the right direction, which made her give up when I told her that I didn't work here. The conductor grinned broadly as he looked at me, but he never bothered to express his feelings to me, since had he done what I did, he would have been fired. Now, I'm not exaggerating or kidding. There are a lot of ridiculous rules in the Netherlands. Instead, the constructor instructed me to leave at the next and last stop, since he obviously felt terrible for the poor woman. You guys know our little secret. My, the conductor's, and now yours. Correction. As of this writing, we have a Friday date, even though we don't live together. Of course, nothing's set in stone, but I'm thinking of making her a stew or a chili with fresh tomatoes. And if she doesn't feel like either, I might make her some homemade lasagna. However, that will have to wait until Saturday, because I don't make lasagna very often, and it takes me a long time to get the sauce just the way we like it. Well, in all honesty, it's largely because we began dating later in life, when we were both settled and rather fond of our own home. While there's much to speak for making it work, we also believed that because of work and other obligations, we wouldn't be seeing each other very much during the week anyhow. That led to the current situation, which finally became second nature to us. To be honest, it has benefits as well as drawbacks. Being alone again after a few enjoyable days spent together is usually a little weird. I understand that this isn't for everyone, but we're happy, and that's all that really matters. Karens who think the world should just revolve around them are always amusing. Here you are, in first class seating, with your headphones on, just ready to enjoy a little moment of comfort and relaxation, when this aggressive for no reason, mind you, Karen assaults you. And I don't even understand, even if you were working there, why would it be a problem that you're sitting, like there was clearly other seats there. I don't, I'm beyond confused why she even had an issue with it, unless she was just trying to be like, oh, we'll get back to work, you know, like, whatever. Why is that any of her business either way? And this poor conductor, who had to sit there and just put up with her BS the rest of the time. Also, the fact that you decided to call your girlfriend right in front of these two bats was just hilarious to me. May your future travels be full of humor and Karen's absence. Happy traveling and cooking. That food sounds delicious. I'm so jealous. The next story is... HOA boss Karen blocked my electric car. Recently, I was finally getting ready to upgrade my car. I had an old Ford that was already very old, so it often broke down. For me, a car is primarily a means of getting from one place to another. My brother persuaded me for a long time to buy an electric car, and in the end, I finally listened to him. As soon as I brought my car home, 
my neighbor, with whom I had never spoken before, came to me and started asking me if my car was an electric car because she had seen the exact same car and it was electric. I said that, yes, it was an electric car. And she started to say that I had no right to own such a car while living in a housing association. This is where the situation became a little clearer for me. Karen, have you seen the bylaws of our HOA from last year? It's strictly forbidden to own electric cars here because we don't share these ideas. Me, I haven't seen any ordinances from the HOA because I'm not part of the HOA. Why should I follow this? Karen, what kind of stupid question is that? Everyone in the neighborhood should follow every update from the HOA. Me, I don't have time to follow an organization that has nothing to do with me. Karen, that's your biggest mistake. What right do you have to talk to the head of the HOA like that? I didn't know she was the head of the local HOA. This is the first time I've heard about it. I tried to find out from her why the HOA had banned electric cars in the neighborhood, and she started telling me even more ridiculous things. Karen, having electric cars in the neighborhood will disfigure it, but that's only half the problem. The main reason for the ban is that we don't want the charging of these electric cars to overload our system. I don't even know what system she's talking about exactly. Probably the electrical system? But still, her line was as stupid as possible because she was trying to make it sound like one electric car takes more electricity than charging all of the neighbors combined. I told her that it was actually none of her business what kind of car I owned and told her to look up the true information on the internet about how much electricity an electric car can actually take. She started shouting that she and the HOA would sue me if I disagreed with something and blocked me from entering the neighborhood. I filmed everything and went to my brother's house to temporarily park my car in his garage. A few days later, I filed a lawsuit against this Karen. It was such a strange case, but I won it. When Karen lost in court, she still didn't change her mind, but... Now there is a normal charging station for electric cars in our neighborhood. And this Karen stopped being the head of the HOA and also paid a symbolic moral compensation. The next story is The Downfall of an Adult Baby Since everything's essentially finished now, I can finally discuss this. Adult Bully, or AB for short, is the sole character in this novel. Now, A.B. was essentially a thug who had only recently been released from prison a few months before enrolling in a course to find employment on the trains. I won't hold his incarceration against him now that I know he made a mistake in the past and was trying to start over with a decent life, I believe. He did, however, overlook one important aspect of this training. He might have to think for himself. He had taken a course like this in prison, so even though he was in college, he found it difficult when the professor didn't walk him through it. I didn't require it. I eventually became proficient in the subject matter to the point that I could assist other students. He didn't like that. What, therefore, can this huge man do to ensure that I understand my place? He attempted to threaten me verbally at first. Not even an eyebrow was raised by me. I'm definitely not easily phased, having worked in retail for 12 years and had threats, robberies, and attacks from various idiots. His ability to communicate verbally is therefore lacking. If he gives the impression that he's about to injure me, maybe I'll wince. After three attempts, all that was received was a tight fist and a long, blank stare. Thus, it's not a good idea because it could cause harm. How about ambushing me covertly and causing me pain? Well, here's the tale then. My lecturer decides to take a position just behind me as I'm talking over things with him. This is my lecturer's chance because he just went to the bathroom. He wraps the ropes around my neck after pulling my hoodie over my head. I give him a good minute to stop strangling me before I elbowed him in the stomach in retaliation. I'm going to wind him down by slamming his face against the table as a precaution. 
He cried in return, saying it was cruel that I had punched him back when he was attempting to strangle me to death. I informed him right then and there that I would take care of him permanently, since I knew he was a whining little bee. I ensured that his parole officer, the job center, the police, and the lecturer were all informed. He attempted to argue that it was self-defense since I had attacked him, but he was receiving little support, and his reputation in the class was awful. His parole officer intervened just in time to prevent him from receiving a community order, despite his other defense, that it was a joke that no one understood being used to minimize his charges. Prior to him choosing to attack him as well, he was scheduled to speak with my parole officer. Because of the parole officer's assault and his violent past, the investigating officer in my case, who was going to give him a pass, ended up charging him with a more serious offense. He spent 14 years in prison, and now, six months into his parole, he might be facing an additional 20 years behind bars because he wanted to establish his tough guy status. Good riddance, in my opinion. He was a gangster trying to prove that he was Charlie Bronson, and in the end all he proved was that he was a little bee. He believed that, in light of everything, he had the right to criticize me, and that I had no right to defend myself. I can't wait to watch him in court and make fun of him while he stumbles for however long it takes. The worst part is that he missed the qualifying exam, which was the entire purpose of the course, due to the time of his arrest. As a result, he'll have to pay for the entire experience again, which would easily cost him £2,000. It'd be awful to be him. Yeah, there's a lot of people who love to just puff out their chest, like this guy, where they're like on the inside, they're just so insecure with their own self, their own image. Their ego is massive, generally speaking, and the only way they can feel good about themselves is to exert some sort of oppression or manipulative force against other people around them to make them feel bad. It's like, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't get the thought process, but hey, there's weak people like that around, and hopefully you, OP, nor any of our other listeners, or anyone else for that matter, only has to deal with a minimal amount of that kind of person going forward because it's really just never a good experience. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.